Hey folks, Jack here from Peach Guitars. Welcome to today's artist special, if you like. This isn't really a tale of two tones, but it's in the same vein. I want to take a bit of a deeper dive into the magic of the guitar playing and the guitar sounds that Jimmy Page paved the way with back in the days, the 60s and 70s, the heyday of Zeppelin, basically. That's what I'm going to focus on today. Jimmy Page is up there. He always ranks among the very top guitar players for a lot of musicians and for very good reason. And I want to take this video as a chance to explore that theme. This video is actually part of a two-part special. This is part one. Part one, in this video, I'm going to spend time really delving into what I think make up some of the best Jimmy Page guitar tones. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that, the kind of more technical side of things, what went into his rigs, and what I'm using today to try and get close to that tone. Part two is going to appear later on on the Jack Griffiths Music YouTube channel, and that's gonna be more of a deep dive into Jimmy Page's playing style. So stay tuned for that one. But until that point, as I say, today's video is all about the tones of Mr. Page. So at the start there, that wasn't really anything in particular. That was just an approximation, I guess, of what I'm trying to get across, which is I wanna kind of get into the mindset of Jimmy Page's musical vibe and the way he used his guitar tones to uh, kind of put that across onto record and live. The trouble with Jimmy Page is that, and this is why he doesn't really make a very good subject for a two tones video, is that he had a million tones. If you study every album from Led Zeppelin 1 all the way through, pretty much every track on every album had a different guitar sound, and that was because he was the master of guitar as a textural instrument. He had a lot of great thoughts as a producer as well, and an arranger, and a lot of that spoke to his guitar tones that he used on records, which is why you find the internet is absolutely awash with so many different accounts of the gear that he used, what was on this track, what was on that track, how everything was different. There's so much mystique around all that. What I find it easier to do is focus on the one constant that we have of Jimmy Page's guitar sounds, which are the live recordings, and even those aren't that constant. Uh, but I remember back it went, when I was growing up and starting to learn to play guitar, I had a great, great Led Zeppelin DVD that had a sort of compilation of a few of their different concerts uh, from the very early days, 68, 69, right up to the end, basically Nebworth in around 79. And um, it was very interesting to me, even listening at an early age, of how Jimmy Page's guitar sounded different as the band progressed. It was always, however, sort of built around the central home point of, of course, his famous 59 Les Paul, the one most famous uh, for, for him to, to have used is that one that was gifted to him or sold to him by Joe Walsh, which had a few modifications done to it. He changed out the pickup many times. Uh, the neck had been sanded down. It was very thin. He later on added all sorts of electronic wizardries, phase reversals, coil splits and all that stuff. But in the earliest days, at least, in the early 70s, you know, to me anyway, 73, that's kind of the golden age of Jimmy Page guitar tone. And it was all down to that Les Paul, really. Obviously, we all know the story with the double neck and the Telecasters featured quite heavily as well. But it all boils down to that great Les Paul burst tone. Now, once again, we're looking for a constant here. So the amplifier on the other end of the signal chain was always hotly debated as to what he used. Oftentimes, it was credited as a Marshall Plexi, a super lead. They were the amps of the day, so as he moved into the 70s, he went to the metal panel era super leads, which had a bit more of an aggressive and brighter tone. And I also believe he had his amps modified with KT88 power valves, which increased the wattage and increased the headroom. So really, when you break it down, Jimmy Page's tone, at least at that time, was always pretty clean. And I, I tend to think, I have a personal hunch here, that as he started as a telly player, he always wanted to get that brightness out of his Les Paul and Marshall hookup. So that's why the amps had the increased headroom, that's why the guitars had the modifications done to them, like the coil splits and so on. But I'm doing a pretty good job today, I think, of getting close to that ballpark with the Dr. Z Maz 18, which I've talked about before. It's a bit of a Swiss Army knife of guitar amplifiers, and I'm using it in a fairly Marshall-style way. Though because this has got EL8, EL84 power tubes, it's kind of got a bit more of that top-end chime as well, which is important for Jimmy Page. Now, also on the floor, got a couple of pedals. I'm not delving into the effects used by Page here because that's pretty obvious. You know, there's a lot of documentation out there when he used the wah pedal and when he used uh, a phaser and a flanger and so on. So I'm not going to delve into that, but the pedals I've got here are basically just to form the foundation of the tone. 
So I've got an Echoplex preamp from MXR, which has been on the whole time, and that was basically what he had. He had his Echoplex unit in line. The preamp from that was always working to bolster up the tone a little bit, give it a bit more thickness and a bit more drive. So that's what that's doing. I'm also using for the leads a pedal from Wampler, which I'm going to come on to talk about in a little bit. Um, but let's just explore, first of all, that rhythm tone, because that's what I love about Jimmy Page so much. He sounds like no other Les Paul player in the fact that he used the middle position a lot and really worked the volume. So let me give you an example of that right now. So all you're hearing is the Echoplex pedal and the Dr. Z Maz, and I'm going to play around with the volume controls in the middle position. And I think this is where a lot of Page's tones actually live. So what you'll get from that, hopefully, is the sense that there's always this sort of slight hollowness to Jimmy Page's sound. Unlike a lot of his contemporaries who used the Marshall and Les Paul thing and had a much thicker sound, um, he actually had a bit of a brighter sound, there's less mid-range to it, and using that middle position and just varying the volume controls independently allowed him to get this more of a kind of acoustic kind of tonality almost, and it's something that I think came from his production ear. And it means that his kind of swagger that he had to his playing, which I'm going to talk about in the in the part two, really, but that led to this very unique sound. And when you're playing rhythm like that, your whole body is part of the movement. So forgive my sort of goofy movements in this video. That's kind of what I'm going for. But let me give another example of that. And I'm going to really play with the controls and you'll hear how much variety there is, all the way from very brighting and bright, almost too bright. And that's what I love about Paige as well. He was always on the edge of being too bright. But then you can back it right off and get that ramble on type clean tone and it's all from the controls. So let me give another example there. <laughs> A lot of dynamics there happening just from the guitar and I think it's important to note this that if you really want to capture the Jimmy Page sound and as I said I'm not going for an exact replication but I am going for the vibe you've got to dip back the mid-range you've got to dip back the bass and you've got to lose a lot of gain back in those days all those tones just came from cranking an amp really loud and having a couple of tricks like the Echoplex preamp doing its thing but really when you have a sound like this it's super revealing and you're really hearing the guitar, you're really hearing whatever effects are going on, usually very primitive they were at the time, 
and you're really hearing the tonality of the amp, even down to stuff like the pick, and I'm purposefully using a Herco, a Dunlop Herco uh, sort of nylon pick today, because that's what Jimmy Page used, I believe, and that's what adds that sort of little extra 2% of that, that snap and that kind of scrapey sizzle to the sound, um, which I really like about his sound. So I teased earlier on that there's another Wampler pedal here that I'm using for the tone, and I'm using that to push out some of the lead sounds that he had. So let me explore that a little bit. It's the Wampler Equator, uh, or EQ Equator, which is quite a cool name. It's basically a really fancy uh, parametric EQ. I'm using it to bump up the treble and the mids even more, so it's going to get even brighter and even nastier and nasal, nasalier, which I like. So let's see what we get out of that. First of all, you're going to hear, with no pedal, then I'm going to put the Wampler on. Pretty cool lead sound that was pretty epic lead sound and that had a little bit of tape delay as well from a Catalin bred Bell Epoch tape delay not strictly accurate but you know it adds in some of that that filler some of that vibe so you know that's kind of to me anyway the crux of Jimmy Page's sound it was always on the edge of just being a little bit too much a little bit too aggressive but the way he mixed the records and the way that he had a huge powerhouse drummer behind him and a thundering bass player and obviously a screaming vocal, it all just sort of worked and it never overshadowed anything else, it never got in the way, and it was never too much, you know, you only hear these things in isolation and think, maybe that's not quite right, maybe that's too aggressive, maybe that's too much, but in actual fact, I think you have to just push those things a little further than you think to get the Jimmy Page thing happening, and so much of it is in the right hand as well, uh, you know, I've kind of given a couple of examples of just really laying into the guitar, but you also really hear it on the sort of the sloppier end of things and that he gets a lot of he gets a lot of criticism for being a sloppy guitar player i think it's actually just a miscredit and that's actually the kind of whole crux of his sound is just a it's rock and roll swagger and this is exactly what it comes out like you know in in riffs like this <laughs> And you know, that's not how it was on the record, but that is how he played it live a lot of the time. And just, it's a totally different sound. It's really just laying into the guitar. And that's what makes Jimmy Page sound like Jimmy Page. So that's kind of the Les Paul end of things. But in the spirit of the two tones, I do at least want to give a little bit of attention to the other guitar that I think he's best known for. So let's just take a quick break and delve into guitar number two. And we'll talk about the ethos behind using that guitar.
All right. This is going to be obvious to Jimmy Page fans, especially given that, uh, you know, in very recent times, Fender, uh, Fender's Custom Shop unveiled this guitar, the Custom Shop Jimmy Page Signature Telecaster. It should be obvious to most people that Jimmy Page was almost as well known for his tele playing as he was for his Les Paul playing, particularly in the earlier days, which I'm going to, re I'm going to come on to in just a couple of minutes. But even into the later days of Zeppelin, kind of by the Physical Graffiti album, you started to hear a lot more tele coming back into the fold. And I think the reason for that is, as I said before with the Les Paul, I think Jimmy Page kind of was a telly player at heart. At least that's a lot of where he started in the Yardbirds and early days of Zeppelin. So that was kind of where his style came from. And I think he can afford to be a little bit more precise on a Telecaster because his style is so heavy handed a lot of the time. It works on a telly. You've got more resistance, uh, the string spacing, the extended scale length and so on. And even the single coil pickups. I think maybe just worked a little bit more for the the kind of inner sound that he was trying to get out. Hopefully that makes a bit of sense. But basically what I'm saying is I think a lot of the essence of Jimmy Page's playing makes sense on a Telecaster and it just works. So what you'll have heard there was exactly the same setup as I had with the Les Paul, the Echoplex preamp, um, the Wampler EQ pedal for a bit of the lead boost, um, and also the Bell Epoch tape delay there as well and you hear that tone leaping out at you as the stairway to heaven solo tone you hear it in the more mellow context on the kind of 10 years after uh, 10 years gone sorry kind of that kind of vibe as well so there's a lot of telly infused in jimmy page's style and i always think it's just worth pointing that out because he is so synonymous with the les paul and the other gibson guitars i'm really pleased that the custom shop decided to pay a bit of attention to that from Fender and unleash this guitar on the world. This is a great, great Telecaster, by the way. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of really traditionally specced, which I like. You know, a lot of custom shop guitars that we see uh, nowadays have all these kind of hybrids going on, you know, under the surface, different frets and so on. This guitar, as far as I know, is, is pretty much a fairly stock uh, 59 type Tele. It's actually top loaded as well, which is all part of the sound, a little bit more zing. So the telly days, I think, should have a little bit more focus when people are trying to approximate Jimmy's sound, maybe, because it is just inherently a nasty sounding instrument, and Jimmy Page is a nasty sounding guitar player. So I love that, but let me just take a moment to introduce you to something as well, to go back a little bit, pedal back to the Yardbirds and the early days of Zeppelin with this guitar. Okay, so to round off this segment, it wouldn't be right if I didn't plug the telly into something more typical of the Led Zeppelin 1 and the late Yardbirds kind of period. But around that time, the Marshalls weren't in the picture yet, nor were 
the Echoplex and all that sort of stuff that came later. What he had famously on the first uh, Zeppelin record was a small Supro combo amplifier, and even that is hotly debated on the internet, but I think it's pretty much well considered that that's what he had using his telly for the most part. And I'm using the JHS Superbolt pedal, which is specifically designed to recreate those old Supro amp tones. I've cleaned up the Maz and set it pretty neutral across the board in terms of EQ, so the pedal's doing all the work there. And it has a totally different character. It sounds much smaller, sounds much more like a small cranked amp. And you can really afford to be a lot more aggressive on the Telecaster because the amp just caves in, it sags more, it's more forgiving. And really, when you compare it to where his tone went later, obviously that was because of what the band was doing. They ended up playing stadiums and such, so they needed a much bigger, clearer sound. But still hard to beat that really early Zeppelin tone where it was just a man, a guitar, a fuzz pedal, and a cranked little super amp. You know, it's really an iconic sound. It propelled the band into the direction that they would ultimately fulfill as rock legends. But, you know, I think it's worth just paying a bit of homage to that early tone as well as the later tone, because they're equally as important and equally as fundamental to the player that is Jimmy Page. <laughs> Alright folks, so there we are. Uh, as I say, this is a part one of Jimmy Page special, so if you want to find out more of my thoughts on Jimmy Page's actual guitar playing and the sensibilities that surround that, you can check out part two, which will be linked below. That's going to be on the Jack Griffiths Music Channel. But until that comes out, I hope you've enjoyed part one, where I've taken a deeper dive on the tones. They're really hard to cop exactly, but as is always the case with these videos, I'm just trying to get close and pay a bit of tribute to what I consider to be some of the best guitar tones of all time. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like and comment down below with your thoughts. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel as well and that you ring the bell so you're notified of all videos from us in the future. So that's it for today. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in part two. Bye-bye.